Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have a few announcements before we begin, we begin worship today. Choir practice is Tuesdays at 6 o'clock. Coffee club is Wednesdays at 10 a.m. And there are stories and popsicles with Pastor Mel Thursdays at 10 a.m. And that's at Houston UMC. Bible study Thursdays at 6 and that's here. And youth group, when is the next youth group? I believe it's August 14th. August 14th. So that's a good time, two to four. Uh, mark your calendars for the church picnic, which will be September 10th. And that starts at noon. Um, it is here at the church. Bring a covered dish to share. And hot dogs, buns, drinks, and play settings will be provided. There's a couple other um, announcements you can read in your bulletin. I won't read them all, but there's a change challenge. Collect your change to pay for apportionments. That would be appreciated. And there's a few sales that you can read about. <clears throat> and church council will be the second Monday of every other month. Are there any other announcements? Yes, we have the wheelbarrow set up. Is that the original wheelbarrow that everybody, every youth and child rode in or in Sunday school? Yes, yes, you did. Okay, any other announcements?
unison reading today is Psalm 96, found on your Bible on page 520 or 677. Please join with me in the reading. Praise to God who comes in judgment. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in honor and splendor. They turn holy for him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. He is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Let us pray together the prayer printed in the bulletin. God of the Incarnation, even as we celebrate the love that was born at Christmas, we know that your love continues to grow far beyond Christmas Day. Even as parents watch tenderly and proudly as their children grow into adulthood, you hold us in your compassionate embrace throughout our lives. Guide us into mature faith, O God, that we may be like Jesus in our love, in our humility and wisdom, and in every word and deed. Shape us, inspire us with the music to sing your praises. Amen.
you need kids who want to come forward for a children's lesson. Come on down, Marty. I said, kids, I didn't put an age limit. We're all kids. In Christ. How you doing, Tori? Ooh, Miss Jess just gave you something cool. Is that a neat bullet? A bulletin. Oh, uh, one of the cool bulletins. Those are cool. Yeah, you can you can join coloring and doing all the puzzles in there later. Now, this seems a little funny today, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Here it is. Not only the last Sunday, but the last day in July. And we're singing Christmas carols. And Christmas songs. And reading the scriptures that are um, that coincide with Christmas and all that stuff. Have you figured out why? Christmas in July. She's a smart cookie. That's what we're doing. And why has Christmas in July become a big thing, you think? You don't know. Because some people don't realize, really know exactly what time of the year Jesus was born. They say he was born near one of the pagan holidays. And when a census was done, no one can pinpoint the exact month. And so some say, well, no, he was born in the middle of summer. And some say <coughs> he was born in December. So we just decided to celebrate both. How's that sound? Yeah, that's how. And some people say I'm wrong. And I'll admit I don't, I, I just go along with the December 25th, um, but I find it interesting in the reading. Um, but I'll take any time to celebrate the birth of Christ. Because what does it symbolize? Do you know? Nope, that's okay. It symbolizes hope, new beginnings. Jews were so and it's, so they felt so trapped in that they're and how much the Romans were controlling their life that they didn't see any hope in their future. And then comes this little baby, <coughs> brings hope, joy. That's why we sing joy to the world and all this stuff. But. Here's this little baby that all things, are going, new things are going to happen. The Romans aren't going to control us. And this and that. They had all these hopes and dreams about the Savior. And here comes Jesus. So why not celebrate it all the time? Right? And we also celebrate, we're supposed to celebrate Easter. Like it's Easter every week. Why is that? Because of the resurrection. That is the freedom. That gives us our salvation. That's when we got reconnected with God. And we have a way to, um, by accepting the gift of salvation through Jesus, we now, the bridge has been rebuilt that we can spend eternity with God. That's why we celebrate every Sunday like it's Easter. Or at least we're supposed to. We're supposed to be resurrected people. I know, I gave you a whole lot to think about, didn't I? Alright, you think about it, you've got questions, you know where to find me. Alright, let's pray and then I'll send you back to mom. Lord, we thank you that we can celebrate your son's birth and his resurrection every single day of our lives. That gives us hope for the future, and knowing that we can spend eternity with you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Have a great week, Joy. Thanks. And this is the time in our service when we share our joys, our concerns, what the Lord's been doing in our lives this past week. Are there those that we need to lift up?
Jen. From the Keener family, two of my good friends from high school lost their uncle this week. And then people with COVID, we still have staff members and even residents coming down to Maui, so just pray that everyone gets you sick. Marty. I need travel mercies. Um, going to Amy's funeral. It's going to be Monday morning. Um, and the Sherman family. Munter family and Sharp family. Need prayers. Tori, I saw your hand back there. Any others? Oh, Gary, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was, uh, we were going to get my brother home because he's just in, in the hospital. Which is good. All right. You know, my brother's guard. Good his numbers are good. His, his numbers are good. That's great news. Yeah, his numbers are back up. Good. Yeah, we'll see how things go. At least we got him home. Okay. He is home or he's coming home? No, he is home. He, he is home. home. All right, and that's um, uh, Rich. Rich, okay. Yeah, it's also nice to see Art here this week. <laughs> yes. Both Art and Jane, it's very nice yeah. to see them. Any others? Not seeing any, then let's go on to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are able to come and gather together and to share our joys and our concerns with one another. And now, Lord, we place them into your loving, caring arms, knowing that that is the best place we can put someone. And Lord, we just pray for all those who are still dealing with COVID. No matter which strand it is, we just ask, Lord, that they recover easily from it and not have lasting effects. And Lord, we pray for Herb as he his um, foot is giving him <coughs> issues. We just ask that it would heal for once and for all. And Lord, we pray for travel mercies, both for Marty and for Karen and her family as um, Marty travels to a funeral and Karen and her family enjoy a bit of uh, relaxation at a, at a beach. And Lord, we thank you so much that we were able to have Rich come home this week. We're thankful that his numbers are back up and where they need to be and we just continue to pray for healing within his life. And Lord, we lift up the Kenner family, the Sherman, the Montar, and the Sharp families. Because Lord, they all now are learning to live without a loved one. We ask you to wrap your loving arms around them give them peace and a gentle reminder that you are there to lean on when the times are difficult. Lord, we pray all this, praying the prayer that your son taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you turn in your hymnals to number 229, of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now into Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. And after eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child. And he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now if you turn in the back of your hymnal to number 881, as we prepare to affirm our beliefs by using the Apostles' Creed. <coughs> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From 
thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are able to gather together and to boldly state what it is we do believe without fear, to be able to come and read your word, hear your word, and live it. And now, Lord, may we learn through hymns about your birth. And may it touch us that we may grow and strengthen our relationship. In your holy name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> well, if you haven't caught on by now, it's Christmas in July. I remember the very first year that I came here, and if you guys remember that, you're good, because it was 2019 when I arrived here, and the very first thing I was approached by, two youth leaders and three teenagers, can we have Christmas in July, please? Oh, please, may we have Christmas in July. At least, if you know our teenagers, they're tall and they're very persuasive. That's now, and they were very persuasive back then. And they had this way of batting their eyelashes, trying to get you to do what they want. You know, looking, looking up at you going, please, it, it, I, you know, and I have a very soft spot in my heart for teenagers. So I couldn't say no to them then. I got asked again this year, couldn't say no again this year, but it's only two times in four years that I've done that. So I think it's pretty good record. And this time, Instead of going and trying to figure out how to fit the um, Christmas story into the middle of summer, when we're all sweating uh, and wishing that it felt like Christmas, I decided to pick a few pe different people have favorite Christmas songs. And I asked a few different ones. I've asked two people from here and two people from Houston to give me their favorite hymn. And then I have a little background story on the hymns. So I'm going to go ahead and read the background story on the first hymn, and then we will sing the first hymn. If you want to flutter around in your hymnals, we'll be singing the song on page 240 in a moment. And that is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. It's based off of Luke 2, chapter 10. Then the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Upon his conversation, Charles Wesley immediately began writing hymns, each one packed with doctrine, all of them exhibiting strength and sensitivity, both beauty and theological brawn. He rode consistently and even on horseback. His mind was flooded with new songs. He often stopped at houses along the road and ran in asking for pen and ink. He wrote more than 6,000 hymns during his lifetime, and he didn't like people tinkering with his words. In one of his hymnals he wrote, I begin to leave mention a thought which has been long upon my mind and which should long ago have been inserted in the public papers. More or less, he didn't want anyone tinkering with his verse. Therefore, I must beg of you these two favors. Either let them stand as they just are, or take things for better or for worse, or by to add the true um, reading in the margins or at the bottom of the page that we no longer be accountable either for the nonsense or the uh, dog world of other men. 
But one man did such a favor by polishing up one of Charles's best loved hymns. When Charles was 32, he wrote a Christmas hymn that began, Hark how all the welkin rings, glory to the King of Kings, peace on earth and merry mild, gone and sinners reconciled. The word welkin, can anyone tell me what that means? I was just seeing if there's any English-based people. It's an old English term for the vault of heaven. And it was Charles's friend, evangelist George Whitefield, who, when he published this carol in his collection of hymns in 1753, changed the words to the now beloved, Hark the Herald Angel Sings. So if you turn in your hymnals to number 240. Seminary in 1857. 
1863, it was published in his Carols, Hymns, and Songs. This hymnal went through three editions by 1882, establishing Hopkins as a leader in Episcopalian hymnody. He wrote other hymns, but most all have fallen into obscurity, but We Three Kings was his crowning achievement made possible in a way through the generosity of another poet that poem that he wrote that ends. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. If you turn in your hand notes to number 254 as we sing verses one, three, and five. beneath away in a manger said Luther's cradle hymn composed by Martin Luther for his children and still sung by German mothers to their little ones. Only stanza one and two were given. Away in a manger quickly became American's favorite children's carol. The words began sung for 41 different tunes. Everyone assumed the poem had been written by the great reformer Martin Luther. Then in 1945, Richard Hill published a fascinating article entitled, Not So Far Away in a Manger, in which he announced he had discovered the first two stanzas of Away in a Manger in an 1885 songbook entitled Little Children's Book, published by German Lutherans in Pennsylvania. No authorship was given, nor could Hill find any appearance of this carol in German church history or in Lutheran's work. After extensive research, Hale concluded it seems essential to lay aside once and for all the legend that Luther had written the carol for his children, which no one else knew anything about until suddenly it turned up in English dress 400 years later in Philadelphia. Luther can well afford to spare the honor, but he had, although Luther himself had nothing to do with the carol, the colonies of German Lutherans in Pennsylvania almost certainly did. So the mystery endures who wrote Away in the Manger. 
There were apparently two unknown writers, a Jew named Lutheran in Pennsylvania, who wrote the first two stanzas, with another unknown author adding a third verse that first appeared in 1892 a songbook, in a songbook published by Charles H. Gabriel. Who, it's, it asks, why do we care? Certainly not the generations of children around the world who have come to love and know the little Jesus through the sweet carol and who have gone to sleep crying. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is not. Please turn in your hymnals to page 217. Christmas hymns entitled Hymns of, for the Nativity of Our Lord. This little hymnal contained 18 Christmas carols Charles had written, of which Come Thou Long Expected Jesus is best known and paid, made enough for him to be married. If you turn in your hymnal to number 196,
those who are able to compose these poems and songs and write the tunes we sing them to. They help us learn our doctrine, help us draw us closer to you, help us to keep them within our hearts and sing them all year through. In your holy and blessed name we pray. Amen. Now is our very last hymn, our closing hymn for today, number 237, Now We Sing of Christmas. Um, just one, one second, Ruth, because I'm not sure how many verses there are on this. Let's do one, two, four, well, let's just skip three. <laughs> one, two, four, five. Thank you. 